when it comes to power apps, you don't need to be a UX or UI designer or a graphic designer to make some great professional looking power apps. I know what you're thinking, but Yusuf, we're not as amazing as you are. But you can too make amazing looking power apps by just following some simple tips and tricks to keep your apps looking good, consistent, and modern. And so I'm gonna share 12 of my favorite UX and UI design tips to enhance your power apps. Can't stress this one enough, plan ahead. Don't get into the actual development of your power apps and within the Power App Studio, start trying to figure out what colors and fonts and sizing to use. Do all that ahead of time. You can just use PowerPoint to go ahead and make your style guide of which colors you'll be using, your font sizing, your font um, typefaces that you'll be using, pick out you know all those kind of elements, and then actually do the design layouts in PowerPoint. Just mock them up so that when you come into Power Apps, you know exactly what you're doing. Look at the apps that you use daily. Any app that you're constantly using, take screenshots of it. Note what you like and don't like about the UX or the UI design. Create a library, create a Power App of all those kind of collections and you apply everything that you've kind of felt or learned from those apps to your power apps. You know, drop shadows. Drop shadows are a great way to show elevation in your power apps. Um, it gives you that great depth and it does add a nice little professional look. There isn't an out of the box drop shadow within power apps, but you can add them with HTML, an SVG. You can even put a PNG um, as an image, but I would definitely go down the path of an SVG. But however you come up with that drop shadow, you want them to be subtle and have a vertical offset. There's no need to make an aggressive looking drop shadow. It just makes your app look very cartoony. And you have to think of light source. There wouldn't be a light source that is giving you the shadow the full square. You know, you're not really, there's not a light source that would do that. So having it slightly offset and vertical will make it look great. And then just like I said, a subtle drop shadow. Fonts, when you're adding fonts to your power apps, you should never have more than two font typefaces in your app. I usually only use one, but if you're gonna use another, I wouldn't go more than two. Once you get past two, your app's gonna start looking a little funky and have this little unorganized look to it. Same with sizing, you really want to establish your font sizing. I never use more than five sizes. On average, I probably use three. So I'll have sizes like header, subheader, body, um, you know, small text. Uh, so make sure you establish that and you're consistent across your power app because consistency is the biggest thing on making your app look professional. Margins goes back to consistency. What I'll do is I'll create actually a rectangle with no fill and a red border and I'll make it into my margin sizes so that I can make sure everything is aligned properly. I do my margins in three sizes, eight, 16, 24. Reason why I do them in those is because they're divisible of eight, which most screen sizes are as well. And so it'll make it a lot easier to divide up, make your apps responsive, make everything fit properly by doing it that way. But however you do it, stay consistent on those margins and spacing. So if you're going to have your headers have a subheader and you use you know the eight point spacing, use that across. Don't the next screen have 16. Consistency again is key. Call to action buttons. Oftentimes, if you're doing something like a form, you're going to have two call to action buttons. Something like a cancel or a submit. When you do have that, your secondary or negative call to action button should not also have a fill if your submit button, let's say, does have a fill. It can, what you can do to just make it subtle, give it a gray font color, no fill, make it subtle and it'll make the app look cleaner and it also draws your user to the main call of action. Contrast versus key line. So contrast versus key line, what I mean by that is when you have a key line, it's a border you put to divide something like a header and the form, you are separating it by a border. Instead of having that, you can just do a light contrast between the two. So you can have a white fill in the back for your header, and then your form can have a very light, subtle gray or a very light, light, subtle blue. Um, 
using that, it's again, makes your app look less busy. Less borders in general are going to make your app look nicer and more modern. So where you can eliminate borders. If you use a gallery and you have the default settings, you'll see there are borders. You can just remove those, use contrast, make them look like separate cards, elements, and it'll look nicer and the borders, removing those will help make your app feel less crowded. If you're throwing some text on a photo, the contrast may be hard to read. So what you can do is this little trick I'll usually do is I'll do a three layer photo, which means I'm doing the first layer at the bottom. It's just a rectangle with a black fill. Then I put the image with a slight transparency to it. Then I put a color on top of that, a color rectangle on top of that, that's also transparent to give a kind of desaturated photo. Then you can put the white text or light gray text on top of that photo and it'll help make it pop and not get lost in the photo. Text on color backgrounds. If you're adding text to a color background, let's say if you're using this dark blue, you'll probably be tempted just to use all white font. What you can do is take that same color that you're using in the background and move it into a lighter version of it. Use that as your font color. And then for the white, where you can see it kind of have a contrast between the subtext and the header, the header is actually a very light gray. And so what I usually use for my light gray is that the hex is F4, F4, F4. If you watch my videos, you'll see I use that a lot. It's close to white, but a little off white, little gray, and it makes your app look better. And it also just helps with the contrast instead of having an aggressive white font color. Two column layout on your forms. Oftentimes we want to make sure our users don't have to scroll through long forms. You can do things like a tab form, but there are use cases where you're going to want to have a two column form and it's going to make it so that you can see all the fields on one screen without scrolling. But what happens with two columns, because I always say, you know, one column is the best way to go. But if you do have a use case where you're going to use a two column layout, you can divide the sections by groups. This makes the form look a lot cleaner. And then you'll want to make sure that your actual input fields have the width that makes sense to what's being entered. So an email column uh, input field should not be the same size as a zip code. So by doing that, it's making it look more realistic and it's guiding to your users of the amount of text that should be inputted into that field. Accessibility, you want to make sure everyone around the world, all your users are able to use your Power Apps. If you go to the Microsoft Power Apps website, there's a very great accessibility white paper in there that you can download. I reference it all the time. So much great information in there. So I definitely suggest you check that out and always make sure that your apps are created to be accessible for all users. Bonus tip, the Power Addicts and Power Apps community. Get inspiration from them. You can go on Twitter and look up hashtag Power Apps, hashtag Power Addicts. So many great people in the community are constantly sharing ideas and apps and solutions. So just join the community, get involved, and you'll learn so much from everyone and so everyone's so inviting. Um, so if you're looking for inspiration, great place to start, especially you can go onto the Power Apps community forum. A lot of apps are shared on there. There are some templates, some samples, and it's a great place to ask questions and get feedback from other users in the community. I hope these tips help, and I can't wait to see how you guys apply them to your own Power Apps. Catch you guys later. Bye.